In a viral clip that's now everywhere, a humanoid robot was seen walking the streets of China right next to police officers. This wasn't a demo or a tech event. It was real streets and real law enforcement. In Shenzhen, people watched as a robot called the T-800 moved through a busy public area alongside special police units. And what made the video unsettling was how ordinary the whole situation looked, as if this kind of patrol was already normal. The robot comes from Engine AI, and the name T-800 suddenly carries real weight. Walking alongside police officers, it moved comfortably within the formation, matching their pace and presence. Its body language felt practiced, almost trained, with movements that looked intentional rather than experimental. The difference was obvious. This robot looked ready. Now, the footage landed harder because it followed another video Engine AI released just weeks earlier. In that clip, the company's CEO, Cao Tongyang, stood in front of the T-800 wearing protective gear. The robot delivered a direct kick to his stomach, sending him to the ground. The moment played lightly on the surface, yet the underlying message was clear. This machine can apply real physical force, and the company openly chose to show that capability. That decision came after earlier videos of the robot performing kicks and combat-style movements sparked online debate. Some viewers questioned whether the footage was computer-generated. Engine AI responded by removing any remaining doubt. The robot interacted physically with a real person, on camera, in a way that left no room for interpretation. Even within a controlled setup, the takeaway was unmistakable. Humanoid robots are now being presented as systems capable of harming humans when instructed. This marks a turning point in how robots are framed. For a long time, robots were introduced as helpful tools designed to assist people while remaining physically restrained. Industrial machines stayed behind safety barriers, and service robots moved carefully through human spaces. The T-800 shifts that narrative. It represents a category where physical intervention is part of the intended function rather than an edge case. Supporters see clear advantages in this direction. Real-world examples already exist where robots have reduced risk for officers and civilians. In Lubbock, Texas, police used a bomb squad robot during a prolonged motel standoff with an armed suspect. The robot advanced toward the threat, deployed tear gas, and eventually pinned the suspect, allowing officers to move in safely. Even though that machine was slow, wheeled, and obviously mechanical, it changed how the situation unfolded. A humanoid system introduces an entirely different scale of capability. One designed to operate in spaces built for humans can move through stairwells, hallways, doorways, and crowds with ease. It can restrain individuals, apply force when required, and function in environments where traditional robots struggle. And that changes how law enforcement scenarios can be handled from the ground up. Engine AI has spoken openly about where this leads. The company recently raised more than $180 million and outlined plans for large-scale deployment and scenario-based testing beginning in 2026. Those plans focus on real environments, unpredictable situations, and continuous interaction with the public. The question of whether humanoid robots can move naturally or generate power already has an answer. What matters now is how quickly people grow accustomed to machines that can physically intervene in human behavior. Each step forward will be framed around efficiency, safety, and cost and each individual deployment will appear reasonable on its own. The most unsettling part lies in how quietly this transition happens. There are no dramatic announcements or warnings. The future arrives calmly, walks beside authority, and waits to be accepted. Quick side note before we continue. Today's video is sponsored by GenSpark, and it actually lines up well with what's happening across the AI space right now. A lot of the focus has shifted away from single models and towards systems that can combine multiple tools and finish real work end to end. GenSpark positions itself as an all-in-one AI workspace rather than another chat interface. Interface. Instead of jumping between ChatGPT, design tools, spreadsheets, slide software, and automation apps, it pulls multiple top models into one environment and actually executes tasks. Slides, documents, sheets, basic websites, brand assets, even things like automated calls and inbox handling all sit in one place. The idea is simple. Fewer tools, less switching, more finished output. One important detail to mention is how they handle model access. Inside GenSpark, you're not locked into one system. It routes work across different leading models depending on the task, and for AI chat and image generation, they're offering unlimited usage throughout next year under a single subscription. For people juggling multiple AI tools already, that consolidation alone is the main appeal. You can start right away with the link in the description below. They're also running a New Year campaign right now. From January 1st to January 7th, you can get 40% off any annual plan. That's about $100 off the plus annual, 
or $1,000 off the Pro Annual. All right, now let's get back to the video. Now, another viral video pushed this whole conversation even further, and the robot in the clip is the G1, built by Unitree. An engineer stands in front of it wearing a motion capture suit, the kind used to train humanoids by copying human movement in real time. Whatever the human does, the robot does instantly. So, the operator starts showing martial arts movements. He lifts his leg into a kick. The robot mirrors it perfectly. Since they're facing the same way, the movement turns on him. His own leg swings up and hits him, sending him to the floor, while the robot keeps mirroring his posture without missing a beat. The clip went viral because it looks absurd at first. Then it clicks. Nothing went wrong. The robot didn't glitch. It didn't hesitate. It followed instructions with precision and speed. One small human mistake was enough to cause real physical harm. That's the part that matters. The G1 is designed for research, training, and real-world testing. Motion capture suits are normal in this process because they let robots learn directly from the human body instead of pre-programmed animations. The video first showed up on Bilibili and then spread across Chinese social media before going global. Robot training sessions usually don't get much attention, but this one stood out because it showed how fast and precise these humanoid systems already are. One small mistake was enough to cause real pain. Now, Unitree has been posting videos of the G1 showing off its physical abilities for months. Back in October, the company released a short clip called Kung Fu Kid, showing the robot performing high kicks, spins, punches, low sweeps, and even flips and backflips. And they made it clear the footage wasn't sped up. Some people loved it, others started asking what the point was, especially when it comes to everyday tasks. Unitree has been pretty clear about that. The G1 isn't meant to be a home robot. It's built for research, education, and development work in labs and universities. The price reflects that too, sitting at around $21,500. In November, Unitree also showed a wheeled version called the G1D, aimed at data collection and real-world testing in industrial, service, and retail environments. Now, just a few days ago, at TechFest 2025 held at the Indian Institute of Technology Bombay, the same robot stepped onto the main stage and delivered a live dance performance in front of a packed crowd. TechFest attracts students, researchers, families, and technologists from across Asia, and it usually focuses on research demos and engineering showcases. This time, the moment that grabbed everyone's attention came from a robot dancing to the viral track Fa Nine La, also known as Sherry Baloch. Phones came out almost instantly as the robot moved in sync with the music under full stage lighting and sound. The G1 stands just over four feet tall and weighs around 77 pounds, built with an articulated frame that lets its arms, legs, and torso move together smoothly. Electric actuators and real-time control keep it stable, while depth cameras and LiDAR help it adjust its posture as it moves. That showed during the performance, where the robot stayed in rhythm, moved cleanly through the choreography, and kept its balance under stage lights, loud music, and a live crowd. This appearance wasn't a one-off. In recent months, Unitree's humanoid robots have taken part in live performances in China, including synchronized routines alongside singer Wang Li Ham during large concerts. These environments push robots beyond lab conditions, exposing them to vibrations, lighting changes, uneven surfaces, and timing variations that don't exist in controlled testing spaces. The song choice added another layer. Fa Nine La comes from the Bollywood film Durandar, directed by Aditya Dar, and gained popularity for its rhythm and choreography. Seeing a humanoid robot tap into that cultural moment helped the clip spread quickly online. The TechFest performance showed how humanoid robots are starting to appear in public, creative spaces, using the same physical capabilities developed for research and training, only this time in front of everyday audiences. All right, now, the next story is, humanoid robots are now being rented out the same way people rent sound systems, lighting rigs, or event staff. A Chinese robotics company called Agibot has launched a platform called Ching Tian Rent, designed specifically for humanoid robot rentals. Businesses and individuals can book robots for different types of events, including weddings, business meetings, concerts, exhibitions, and trade shows. Instead of buying a robot, customers rent one for the day, complete with delivery and technical support. The pricing depends on the robot and the type of event. According to a quotation sheet seen by Chinese media, a Unitree U2 humanoid robot used mainly for dancing and performance rents for about $690 per day. A smaller option, the Unitree Go 2 Air Robot Dog, 
comes in much cheaper at around $138 per day. Ajibot's own Yuanzeng A, 2 humanoid, which is marketed for interactive roles, rents for roughly $1,380 per day. All of these prices include transport and on-site technical staff. Qingtian Rent is already active in 50 cities across China. According to Ajibot's CEO Li Yian, the platform has onboarded around 600 service providers and more than 1,000 robots so far. The company plans to expand quickly, with a goal of operating in more than 200 cities during 2026. Behind the scenes, Ajibot is trying to organize a market that has been chaotic. Analysts point out that robot rentals in China have suffered from unstable pricing, seasonal demand swings, and incompatible systems between different brands. Qingtian Rent aims to standardize that process by acting as a central platform that connects robot makers, rental providers, and customers. The idea of renting robots took off earlier this year after humanoid robots from Unitry appeared at the Chinese New Year Gala, which briefly pushed rental prices sharply higher. Since then, competition has increased and more robots have entered mass production, bringing prices back down. The Chinese robot rental market was valued at over $140 million in 2025 and is expected to cross $1.4 billion next year. Agabot alone recently passed the 5,000 unit production mark, making large-scale rentals much easier to support. Similar services exist in the United States, yet China's approach stands out for its scale and coordination. All right, share your thoughts in the comments. If this breakdown was useful, leave a like, subscribe for more AI and robotics updates. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one.